Good morning, guys. Okay, I'm ready. Perfectly, everything goes smooth. <laughs> but um, just so you guys know, so I do have Psalm 8 study notes. Okay, I have them. It's four pages, but I still have to edit a few things on it. So right after this live, I'm going to go back on my computer, edit a few things, change a few things, and then post it up for you guys to get. If you did purchase the Psalm 1 study notes, I will be sending those out today after the study and i think that's all i wanted to talk about before i start i believe that's it um yeah but good morning miriam good morning dominique good morning i'm trying to get to the comments on my computer and they won't let me go great let me use my phone okay good morning cheryl okay is it Zanetta, probably saying it wrong. I'm sorry. Good morning, Jeanette. Good morning, Marie. Maria, sorry. Um, I am very tired, you guys. <laughs> Stayed up late to do the notes. I think this is why it's going to be better for me to alternate um, weekends when I do these because I, I was tired last night and then I woke up a little late because I ignored my alarms to do this. So, yes! <laughs> sorry for running a little late. Um, okay, there it goes. It's working now. Great. Okay, is it extremely blurry? I'm looking on my computer and it looks a hot mess. I don't know what is going on. I just don't care for uh, Facebook Live, so I'm going to try to figure out another way that I can do these live sessions. But, yeah. So I'm going to quickly pray us in and we're going to jump right in. It's only nine verses for today. Really short psalm and um, yeah. So hopefully this is not over two hours because I know the last live yesterday was like two hours long. <laughs> but um, I'm going to quickly pray us in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for giving us breath of life. We thank you for waking us up and allowing us to see your glory. I pray that this study is edifying to people. I pray that people are able to glean from this study. I pray that we all are just able to enjoy the fellowship that we can have with one another to discuss your word on this glorious morning. Amen. So for those who are new who will be watching this on YouTube later or who will be watching the replay, I'm just going to basically run through the materials I'm using, my method of study, and then we're going to dive right in. So the Bible that I'm currently using is my beloved Bible. This specific one was a gift from one of you ladies. Alicia sent me this Bible and it is amazing, but um, it is this brown, I don't, I don't even know what they call it, brown bonded leather is what they call it. Um, the one that I normally use is this one, which is a teal floral um, cloth overboard. I like this, but my problem is that it started to fray. If you guys can see, it started fraying, and I don't really care for that, and it gets dirty really fast. So, I'm excited to have this new one, and it is the New King James Journal of the Word Bible. It basically allows you to either write your notes or to do artwork in it. The lines are really faint, as you can see. Probably can't see that right there. The lines are really faint. They're dotted um, like a light sort of gray color. This is the updated version. It is the comfort print. So basically what it is, is the text is a little bit darker for you to look at. And I'll just show you guys from the previous one. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but um, the text for this one is not as dark as this. And I noticed that they did change the um, color on the paging. This one is more of a creamy yellow. This one is more of like a light tannish kind of color. But um, that is the Bible that I love and use. Um, outside of that, of course, I have my New King James spirit for life bible which i'll be reading all of the cross references from but i prefer the new king james translation that's my preferred translation of studying and reading but i do enjoy other translations um writing utensils i have three that i enjoy the micron 01 0.25 millimeter pens as well as the gel and ballpoint pen from zebra the g301 is the gel pen it's a 0.7 millimeter and then the f301 is a ballpoint is a 0.7 i'm going to be using that for today post-it notes any variety the two i'm going to be using today are the coffee ones i think we can still find these at walmart um if i'm not mistaken and then these i think i got these from walmart as well 
or I got them from Etsy. Can't remember. But page flags and post-it notes of any variety, really. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then my beloved beauties. So I do enjoy using the super tips from Crayola. These literally are like God sent for doing your Bible studies. I love them. They don't bleed through. And if you get the 50 pack, it's not it's affordable and you get a bunch of colors to use. And then of course my beloved Zebra Mild Liner highlighters. I love these. They're dual ended. Can you guys see this? They're dual ended and um they have one side that is fine and then the other side is your normal chiseled highlighter they do have a new pack that is the brush tip ones which a lot of people use for like calligraphy i like these a lot especially the fine point um it's like an ultra fine point really great but i noticed that they do dry out a little bit quickly um but they're great yes lisa the super tips are awesome i love them so much um they're like literally my number one favorites but I, for some reason, I just, I, I'm, I'm in love with these mouth liners. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, we're going to dive in for today. So again, if you want the notes, they'll be available right after this. I, I'll be reading from the notes though. So Psalm 8, it says the glory of the Lord in creation. It's to the chief musician on the instrument of Gath. It is a Psalm of David. So David specifically wrote this Psalm. I know we went over Psalms 1, Psalm 1 yesterday, but it doesn't specifically say who wrote the Psalm. So couldn't really tell you guys, but, um, this one was specifically written by David and the instrument was a gath. I'm not 100% sure exactly what a gath is. I probably should have looked it up, but I didn't. So if you guys are interested, you can look up the instrument of a gath. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically Psalm 8 is written by David before he was king. I believe it's before he was king. Um, and it's a psalm just about nature and about the creation that God created. Um, it also shows how little man is and how great God is. However, though man is little, we are the pinnacle of creation and the object of God's watchful care. So that's basically like a summary of exactly what Psalm 8 is. And like I said, nine verses. So for those of you who are new, who'll be watching this down the line, I'll run through my method. Um, it's not really going to work with this Psalm because it's so short, but normally what I do, for example, I'll show you here with Psalm 9. What I would do is read through first, um, whether it's section by section, so like paragraph by paragraph or the entirety of it. The first time through, just reading no markings. The second time, I would read it again in circle words that I want to define. And these words that I want to define are going to be words that I already know, words that I don't know. And the reason why I circle words that I eat, I already know is because I'm not looking these up in the English dictionary. I'm looking them up for the Hebrew definition just to get a full understanding of the text and the scripture. The reason why it's Hebrew is because it's the Old Testament. If we were doing the New Testament, then I would look it up in Greek. So depending on which Testament in the Bible you're studying, you would either look up the Hebrew or the Greek definition. So after I do that, um, I then go in again and then I underline. So I'm basically reading the text sort of three to four times and I'm breaking it down every time further as I'm reading through. So after I circle words that I want to define, I then underline portions of the scripture that stick out to me and make my notes. Then I box my notes and I add color because I feel like color just makes everything look pretty and it's easy for my eyes to see. So I know that this yellow underline goes with this note and this green box up here goes with this note. And if I'm looking at the other colors, I can go to my sticky note and see that the colors correspond to whatever color I circled. So I find that it's very helpful in keeping my notes organized um, and it, it's visually pleasing to my eye. <laughs> um, so we're going to dive in starting out with... Verse 1, it says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. 
O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So then we're going to just circle words. Again, I have quite a lot of words circled. I meant to have this already written out on my post-it note, but running a little late, it's okay. So we're going to do it on camera. <laughs> so um, starting out with verse one, the only two words I wanted to circle were excellent and above. Let me put some lotion on my hand real quick. <laughs> Where is my lotion? Right here. Sorry, guys, I just need to put some lotion on my hand. Washing your hands so often, what happens is your hands start to dry out. And the water where I live in Jersey is very, very harsh. So, I pray you are all doing well with everything that's going on in the world. Um, I heard that they just announced that New York City schools will be closed for good until the next semester. Um, not semester, next school year. Um, which I pretty much kind of knew that they were going to do that just because, I mean, it's a pandemic and there's literally no cure. So, good morning, Anne. But, okay, hands are moisturized. Back on it. Okay, so, <laughs> in verse 2, I circled ordained. I circled strength. I circled silence, enemy, and avenger. And again, these are words I know, but when you're really defining them in their original language in Hebrew, a lot of the times they definitely have different meanings from what we use words for. Um, going down to verse 3, I circled consider. That was the only word that I really circled. In verse 4, I circled man. And it was a specific reason why I circled that word, <laughs> which we'll get to. I circled mindful and visit. Going to verse 5, I circled lower, crowned, glory and honor. Verse 6, I circled dominion and under. So that was pretty much the only words that I circled. I didn't circle anything else in 7 through 9 because 9 literally just repeats verse 1 and 7 and 8 just talks about animals. Don't think I need to define animals. Yes, Miriam, I'm definitely, you know, staying in. You guys know the little mishap I had <laughs> previously um, within the, was it last month? Yeah, because we're in April. So when I wasn't feeling well in March, yeah. Just, I, I've decided to officially stay in a house, don't go anywhere. Because the one time I did go out, I got sick, and um, I noticed that a lot of the shop rights where I live in Jersey, most of the employees are getting tested positive for the COVID. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was the president that oversaw the shop rights in Jersey had recently passed away from it. So I've officially decided that I'm going to stay away from shop right because when I went to shop right, I got sick the next day and I had a fever and symptoms basically of COVID. I don't know if it was COVID. I'm praying it wasn't. But the reality is we'll never really know because a lot of people cannot get tested. So I'm just, I'm staying in the house. And if I go out, I go to Walmart early in the morning with my mother. I wear a mask. I wear gloves. But other than that, I'm in the house. <laughs> I don't go nowhere. I can't do it. Mm -mm. Can't do it. Can't do it. Not in this day and age. But moving on. <laughs> um, okay. So again, this will be available immediately after I have to go in and fix some stuff. Okay. Okay, so excellent is the first word that I, um, can you guys see this? I don't know. Uh, okay, excellent. So verse one, basically with the definitions, I have the English word, the verse reference, the Hebrew word, as well as the definition. Anything that's italicized will be um, the definition in the English dictionary. So excellent in Hebrew is adar, adar, don't know how to pronounce it. Not going to attempt it this morning. I'm not even going to tell you guys the Hebrew. I'll just show you guys. But <laughs> the definition for that is majestic, famous, which when I think about excellent, I never really thought of the word famous, but it wasn't until I looked it up in the Hebrew that I found that excellent is famous. So majestic, famous, glorious, goodly, mighty, and noble. So I'm writing all of my definitions today on a post-it note. So... 
Excellent. I'm going to put famous, mighty, um, and glorious. Because I would like to think that God's name is very famous in all the earth. If you go down, it says, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So that's why I put famous. The next word we have is above. Again, sorry about the shaking and the quality. I have to, I have to literally try to figure that out today, how to fix the quality. Or I'm probably going to have to do a live stream from another app into the Facebook group because I can't stand the quality on here. I really can't. <laughs> but above is basically beyond the time or over. Um, if you guys can see above. This is the Hebrew word, and the definition is beyond the time or over. So, I think my pen is running out of ink, but we're still going to go. Next word I had was ordained. And the Hebrew definition for that is um, to establish, to fix, um, to a point or to lay for a foundation, which I like that. So I'm going to put to establish and lay for a foundation. The next word we have is strength. For that, it says might, force, security, boldness, or power. So I'm going to put boldness, power, and security. Then I have silence. So for silence, I really could not find um, when I was doing my study. I didn't really use my concordance. I went online to look it up. So I couldn't really find the um, Hebrew word for it. So I left it blank. And because I couldn't find the Hebrew, I just went and defined it in English. And that's another tip. If you cannot find the Hebrew word or the Hebrew definition for a word, look it up in English and try within the English dictionary to figure out what it means according to the scripture. So for this silence is absence of sound and noise or to cause to cease hostile firing or criticism. And I really like that because I think it's interesting when we go back to the verse where it says that you may silence the enemy. So I'm going to put to cause, yeah, my pen is definitely running out of ink. All right, we have to switch pens, which I really don't want to do. Where's my pen case? Sorry, guys. I need to switch my pen real quick. <laughs> you guys might hear some books falling in a second. Hopefully, you don't. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Do I have an extra pen? Oh, yes, I do. I have two extra ones. Yay. Got another one. Okay. So, I'm going to use this one to lick the dice. <laughs> So to cause to cease hostile firing or criticism. Next word was enemy. An enemy is basically a foe or an adversary. Um, in the English dictionary, it says a hostile unit or force, one that is antagonistic to another. So I'm just going to put adversary. Next word is avenger. And it's one that takes vengeance, one that avenges, or one that punishes. So... Takes vengeance is all I'm going to write. Next word was consider. And in Hebrew, there's a lot of different words. So it says to stare, 
to see, to think, to view, to discern, to enjoy, to experience, to gaze, to take heed, to look in, and to perceive. So I'm going to put to take heed. So take heed, experience, to see, and to gaze. And the reason why I'm going with these specific words is because this is all about um, the glory of the Lord in creation. And with creation, I definitely want to experience his power and his glory through the things that he created. I definitely want to visually see it. I want to gaze upon it and things like that. So that's why I'm specifically using these words because it's going to make sense when I plug those words into the scripture. Next we have man. Um, and man, of course, is literally just a mortal. It's mankind. It's a person. But um, what I wanted to really put was that man is a reference to Adam who caused man to be born in sin. Because it says, what is man that you are mindful of him? Um, and I, I'm, I know I'm going ahead of myself. I'll break it all down further down. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to put that it's a reference to Adam. Who caused man to be born in sin? Then we have mindful. Mindful is to remember with kindness in Hebrew, so. To remember with kindness so it's not like someone is remembering you with a negative thought but they're remembering you with kindness in them the next word was visit sorry for the camera shaking I'm looking at the live on my computer and see that my camera shaking I apologize I'll just use my tripod next week <laughs> um, Visit is to attend to, pay attention to, and to observe. And I'm going to put all of that because it makes sense when you read the scripture. To attend to, pay attention to, observe. Lower literally is just to lack in something, so to lack. Crowned is to surround or encircle, which is definitely different from what I would have thought, um, because when I think of crowned, I think of placing a crown on your head. But according to the Hebrew definition, it means to surround and encircle, and the Hebrew word is atar. I think that's how you say it don't know but atar is to surround or encircle which i think is quite interesting to surround slash encircle following that we have glory glory is abundance or splendor Then we have honor. I'm going to fit all these words on this one sticky note. We show all. We are not about to use another one. <laughs> so honor in Hebrew means majesty, splendor, beauty, comeliness, or magnificence. So I'm going to put beauty, majesty. And again, when I think of honor, I don't think of beauty. So just to find that as a definition for honor in Hebrew was interesting. So, um, beauty, majesty, the next word was dominion, am I writing this right? Oh well, even if I'm not, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, dominion, it means to rule, to reign, to gain control of, to govern over, or to have ruling power. So, ruling power. 
gain control of govern over and the last word was under uh oh all right pen let's go <laughs> yep let me just switch pens I'm not gonna do it to myself I'm not gonna do it there we go so under um it basically means below instead of or beneath so I'm gonna write all of that below instead of beneath okay maybe it's not my pen maybe it's just the keyboard okay so all the words are there let me take a sip of my coffee on this morning and you guys know I like to share what drink I'm drinking so the coffee that I have this morning um it's actually a latte if I'm not mistaken the Maxwell House latte I was I talked about it in my YouTube videos if, if you guys seen the recent ones but um I have a mix of the vanilla caramel latte and the cafe vienna i think it is with of course a little bit of my famous cold stone creamer sweet cream creamer from international delights we love that creamer and it's so sad because with everything going on i can't go to get my creamer because my creamer is only sold at Shoprite. and i just told you guys i'm a little scared to be going to shop right because i got sick when i went to shop right <laughs> so yeah okay so, definitions are done. Let's add some color. I feel like I want to play with my super tips today, but I don't feel like getting up to go get them. But you know what? No, I'm not. All right. I thought I was, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> We're just going to add color. So now I'm just adding color. And I am just using the colors to correspond In no particular order, I'm just putting color where I choose. There's never a rhyme or reason. I just try to separate the colors. Avengers right here. see this dark gray is like ugh, so annoying i'm gonna use dark gray for enemy just because no i'm not i'm gonna use it for man and then i'm gonna use brown for our enemy just to use that color and get it out of my way um red Let's go with strength. I don't know what color this is, but we're going to use it for visits. <laughs> Actually, I do know what color it tells me. This is dark blue. What was that? Visit. So we're going to use dark blue for visit. These do have names as well. This color is called Smoke Blue. So for Smoke Blue, we'll use it on Silence. I'm trying to get all the darker colors used right now. I'm taking this um, Vermilion color. We're gonna use it on Dominion. Taking this blue color here from Crayola, I'm going to use it for under. This color here, I don't even know what it's called. Marigold. Mindful. 
And if you ladies have any questions, um, any comments, you can leave them. If you need me to slow down, let me know. I know I talk super fast. Yeah, I know I'm learning. So, <laughs> this color is called lavender. I don't even know why they call this lavender because it's not lavender. Not at all. Not by any means, but whatever. <laughs> and we need three more colors. And so, lower... What is a gray color? I just saw it. Glory. Oops. And honor. So there we go. Honor. Glory. Ow. That hurt. And lower. So when you look on here, you can see that every color is corresponded to here. So I know what is what. Okay. I need a bigger desk. Oh gosh, I can't wait to get a bigger desk because this is just not going to work. Moving forward, let's now break down the scripture. So I got my notes in front of me. So... David starts out with, ooh, hazelnut coffee sounds so delicious, Lisa. I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing it. <laughs> but that sounds really good. But, okay, sorry. <laughs> so he starts off with saying, Lord, our Lord. So I underline Lord, our Lord. And what I understand from this is that this is a personal name of God. So it's showing his title as master and sovereign God. And it's letting me know that David is being real personal in this. He's not just giving a general sort of statement about um god and the creation but it's being real personal so i'm just gonna put personal name of god showing his title as master and sovereign god I'm just going to take the yellow something I think it's this paper quality compared to my other one that makes highlighting really hard in here but okay then he says how excellent is your name in all the earth so I'm going to underline excellent is your name in all the earth and for that he is not just personally saying that God is excellent but that God is excellent in all of the world as creation proclaims him to be. If you look around, you can see how excellent God is. He made the sun, he made the stars, he made the sky, he made the ground that you walk on, he made the dirt. I mean, he made the soil, like he, he made everything. So everything in creation proclaims God to be excellent. He shines bright overall. And I do have two cross references. Let me grab my Bible for that. So. It's, it's, it's about to be messy in a second, but that's okay. That is all right. Um, and again, I'm using my New King James um, Spirit Hill Life Bible to read out of. So the first cross-reference is going to be Isaiah 12 and 5. And it reads, Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. And then the next one is Romans 1 and 20. And that says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So you actually could read further, but I'm just going to leave it there at um, Romans 1 and 20. So let me put this Bible over here. 
and I'm going to, I guess, put it up here. So I'm going to write, I, I wrote Isaiah wrong, didn't I? Sure did. Isaiah 12, 5, Romans 1, 20. And um, basically, creation proclaims him to be excellent. And again, when you think of excellent, um, the definition for that was famous. So the definition was famous, mighty, and glorious. So... How famous is his name in all the earth? How glorious is his name in all the earth? How mighty is his name in all the earth? And you can see that because of creation itself. You don't even have to rely on man to see how famous his name is. You can just look around you. Even in the midst of what's going on, you can step outside your door, look at, you can hear the birds chirping. Every morning I wake up now, I hear the birds chirping clearer than ever, like every morning. <laughs> you know, you can look outside, look at the clouds. It, it all attests to, attest or is it testify? It all testifies and proclaims his excellence. So, just gonna do that and make an arrow. And you don't have to make arrows, I just enjoy arrows. <laughs> so, just know that you don't have to do arrows. I'm sorry, guys. I just want to check to see something. Yeah, it's definitely this paper and this Bible. Okay, not my. I'm not crazy. Just wanted to see because I'm, I'm noticing that the bleed through in this is a lot worse than uh, my other Journal of the Word Bible. But I still don't mind. That was so random. But, yes. Um, Moving on, it says in the rest of verse 1, Who have set your glory above the heavens. So all that I underlined was set your glory above the heavens. I'm going to use this green for that. But um, God is excellent. I'm sorry. His God's excellent goes beyond what we can see on earth and what we hear about the heavens. He is well beyond because, again, above means beyond the time and over. So, therefore, God is well beyond and over what we could ever imagine. Even the angels cannot understand his vastness. Again, we only hear of his name, whereas the angels get to see him work. And even then, he is exalted above the angels. The angels exalt him. So, therefore, his glory is above the heavens. It doesn't stop at the heavens. It goes way above that. So, I'm going to put... His excellence goes beyond what we hear and what the angels see. Moving on to verse 2, he then says, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants. And I think that that's in itself a powerful statement because this is showing that there is strength and weakness. Um, when you think of a baby, especially a, nur a nursing infant, um, they're very tiny. They're very weak. They're just being born into the world. They're still um, docile. Is that the word I want to use? Um, they're still sort of ignorant in a sense to the world but this shows that there is strength and weakness because God can use a baby for anything you know his power can be seen in all including children who in the eyes of man we believe children are the weakest things however um this does a few things but um the main thing is that when you think when I think about babies there are two infamous babies infamous is that the word famous babies that i think of um baby moses because um even though he was born as a baby he basically is surpassed the word that i want to say not surpassed but 
he overcame what Pharaoh wanted to happen. And when he grew up, he brought Egypt to its knees. And then you have baby Jesus who saved mankind. His birth alone saved mankind. So um, when I think of out of the babes of out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, I instantly think of baby Moses and baby Jesus. But also this shows that children will praise Jesus. One thing I love about my church, Flight to Freedom Worship Center, is that the children in my church, they are very active when it comes to praise and worship. And even when we're having like our praise break sessions in church, the children will get up and shout. My son will be in the I don't know if you guys seen the Instagram video I posted of my son. Good morning, Melissa. Um, but I don't know if you guys saw, saw the Instagram video I posted of my son. We, my brother, my, both my brothers are musicians, um, well-rounded musicians, we'll just say. And um, they make music, they play music, all types of music. But when they play worship music, my son will bust out and appraise just randomly. And I'm just like, wow. Because children, they don't think, they just do. They know that God is great. They know that he's powerful. They know that, that he's mighty. Um, they know that he is God overall. They don't have a full understanding, but they know it. And they worship freely, like freely. But as we get older, as we become adults, and as we become um, teens, we start to get reserved in our praise. I know for me, I there was no shouting. Mm -mm, you couldn't. You wouldn't catch me shouting. It'd have to be like a real, real big, mighty praise session going on for me to bust out in a shout or just to say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. But um, now you can't tell me nothing. They play the shout music in church. It might take me a minute, but I'm going I'm to bust out in a praise, okay? I don't know if you guys saw my ordination video, but that, <laughs> that entire night of my ordination, I would not stop praising, like literally. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to underline out of the mouth of babes. And nursing infants um, I do have three cross references for that so let me read that before I write my notes the first one is Isaiah 28 verse 9 so 28 and 9 says whom will he teach knowledge and whom will he make to understand the message those just weaned from milk those just drawn from the breast the next one is going to be Matthew 21, 15 to 16. And that's just a scripture where Jesus was talking about um, the little children. Great, my computer is going to die in a second. So I'm going to have to pause and go plug that up. But um, 21, 15 and 16 says... Where is it? But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? So just alone in verse 15, you see that these children are crying out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And this upsets the priests and the scribes. Um, and then in 16, Jesus' response says, Yes, have you, have you never read... Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. So again, Jesus is literally just re-quoting scripture. Which one is he quoting? Where is it? Which is basically quoting Psalms 8 too. <laughs> so let me go plug my laptop up real quick, you guys. Let me bring the comments back. So we'll use this purple color. Over here, I'll put the cross references, which I said are Isaiah 20 and 9, Matthew 21, 15. 16 and there is another one it's going to be first corinthians 1 27 which i'll read it in a second but um first corinthians 1 27 And it reads, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame those which are mighty. So God can use the weakest thing that we believe is weak 
to really um show his power in a sense so let me put there is strength and weakness Um, I'm going to put baby Moses. Brought Egypt to its knees. Baby Jesus saved man. And keep in mind, when Moses was born and he was saved by Pharaoh's daughter, no one thought much of him, you know. And then when they found out that he was Hebrew, they didn't think that there was much that he can do. But God proved them wrong in that. And with Jesus, uh, was a King Herod. He tried to, you know, do the same thing as Pharaoh, kill the boys. But um, even then, Jesus was ordained to save mankind. And he did it just by being born. So then it says, you have ordained strength. So with that, it is basically letting me know that God had already established and prepared us with strength that we needed at birth. So the minute that we were born into this world, um, the minute that we were technically conceived into this world, because he knew us before we conceived, we were conceived in our mother's womb, um, we were already given the strength that we would need to live this life. And even if we need more strength, we have unlimited access to the source of strength, which is through Jesus Christ. So you have ordained strength. Why did I put that back? Let me mark this. Just got a message, You're not sure what it's from. Mm. Oh. All right, so you have ordained strength. I'm going to write God already established and prepared. God already established and prepared us with strength needed. at birth then it says because of your enemy so with that he displays his strength in unlikely vessels um God never uses the things that we think he should use. You know, he doesn't use the important people we think he should use. We don't think um, that he'll use. Okay, for example, the biggest idiot in my eyes, I don't know if you guys agree, Lord forgive me, but the biggest, most retarded person in the world to me at this point in time is President Trump. I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to be political, but I'm using this as an example because in my eyes, Trump is dumb, okay? <laughs> this is a personal opinion. I don't know if you guys agree. Personal opinion. I'm trying to use my opinion to form the understanding. So, yeah, okay? <laughs> but in my eyes, Trump is absolutely the dumbest, most ignorant person in the world. Especially as a president of the United States of America. I'm sorry. But if you really think about it, he was put into position for a reason. I'm not sure what that reason is. No one will ever know what that reason is. But... God created order and he keeps the order. So for Trump to be president, there has to be a reason behind it. Whether God allowed it, whether he called it to happen, God will use any unlikely vessel for his purpose and to display his strength. So, you know, just, just keep that in mind. You know, everything that we think should happen or no, is that how I want to say it? 
the things that we think God should use to reveal his power and his strength, he won't use. He'll use the unlikely, lesser, foolish, as the Bible says, things to display his strength, his power, and his might. Hopefully that made sense. I just had to throw that out there. But um, then it says that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Now remember, when I looked up silence, it said to cause to cease hostile t um, firing or criticism. So basically what happens is when God uses those weak things, those vessels that are unlikely to display his strength, there is nothing that anyone can say. They have to remain silent. They have to stand in awe. They have to cease what they're doing. They have to stop their negativity because there's there's just no way that you can say anything after God uses something unlikely and unknown to display his strength. He can use a mighty person to display his strength, but if he chooses to use a weaker vessel, there's nothing that you, you, there's nothing you can say. Just just stand there in awe. Like he's God. He can use anything that he chooses, but he uses the weak, which is why there is strength and weakness. Yes, Lisa, he definitely was. Um, and I can't remember who I heard say this. I, it, it was either on the radio station, I heard it, or I, I don't remember what it was. But they were talking about Trump in um, relation to God, I guess, in a sense. And they were saying that God had put him in position for a purpose, even though we as Americans can't stand this man. But, you know, he was put there for a purpose, for a reason. What that purpose and reason is, we will never know. Because he is just, he's one of the worst presidents, <laughs> in my opinion, in the world ever that we had. But people voted for this man. God put him in position for a reason. Hopefully he reveals that reason to us, but he may never reveal exactly why Trump was placed in the position that he's placed in. You know? But um, moving on to verse three so then it says when i consider your heavens and the works of your hands the moon and the stars which you have ordained so for me i underline when i consider because it's not if i consider it's not should i consider but when i consider so this basically tells me that i should and will will consider something i'm supposed to do it basically so basically i should consistently or i should constantly be looking at the work and the glory of god every day because everything around me is a part of his glorious work and consider again that means to take heed to to experience to see to gaze upon so i should be experiencing the work of god's hand I should be taking heed to the work of his hand. I should be gazing upon his work. I should be looking at the heavens, looking at the sky, looking at the trees, the flowers, listening to the birds, um, experiencing the air. Like, I don't think anyone really experiences air. And it sounds so ridiculous to say that, and it just came to me, thank you, Jesus. But um, no one really, can like, experiences it. We know that it's there. We feel it when the wind blows, but we don't get to fully experience it in its fullness. We just know that it is. So it really just makes me think. Let me just turn my heat off real quick because I'm hot. Yes. But um, that's something I actually didn't write down. I should probably add that to the notes. That was literally just like a spiritual download. But um, so when I consider, I should constantly be looking at the working glory of God every day. In every circumstance even in the midst of this craziness going on in this world with this pandemic you can still look at the work and the glory of God even in your house the fact that you have a house the fact that you have a bed the fact that you can have a cup of coffee the fact that you have water the fact that you have food the fact that you're able to be with other people because there are some people who live by themselves and can't be around other people so when I consider, it just makes me understand that I should constantly be looking at the work and the glory of God every day. So constantly look at the glory of God. Oh, look at that. I just heard a bird chirp.
Then it says the work of your fingers. Um, God need but only a finger to create a masterpiece. He's the creator and the master artist. He doesn't need a whole canvas. He doesn't need paints. He doesn't need like 35 helpers. No, he don't need his hands. He, he, he can use a finger. You know, he can point to something. He don't even have to use his fingers because at the beginning of creation of the world, he spoke the world into existence. So he doesn't technically have to even use a finger. He can speak it and it will happen. So this just lets me know that he's the creator and the master artist of everything. Then it says the moon and the stars. Um, when you think about the moon and the stars, it's in the sky. The sky is very vast. The moon is very big. We see a small piece of the moon. Does that make sense? The moon in our eyes is very small, but it's really a large thing in the sky. The stars are tiny, but there's so many stars in the sky. So for me, this lets me know that God's power and majesty is vaster than the sky and all that is in it. Um, everything that God is goes beyond the moon and the stars. I'm going to put he's vast. He is vast. Simple as that. Is that the right way to say it? I don't know, but yep. I meant to put his power in majesty, but we'll just leave it there. <laughs> it then says which you have ordained. So God, like I said, creates order and he keeps it. Everything is appointed by him for a specific purpose and a specific season. So I'm literally just going to write. He creates and keeps order. Sorry guys, if you hear that. I'm just putting some of my highlighter. Book. Then it says, what is man that you are mindful of him? So what is man? That alone is interesting for me because we are little and insignificant in contrast to God's power. We were born in sin due to Adam and Eve. We are a forgetful people and we are easily swayed by circumstances, by other people, by situations, by the things that we see, by the things that we watch, but see and watch are the same thing, by the things that we hear. Um, so like, what is man? We're, we're very insignificant in contrast to his power. For that, I have a cross reference of Isaiah 40 and 22. I can flip to it. Um... I said Isaiah 40, 22, right? Yep. So Isaiah 40 and 22, it says, is that the right scripture? Okay, yes. So Isaiah 40 and 22 says, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in so compared to god and the vastness that he is we're basically grasshoppers <laughs> okay so the fact that they literally as the prophet isaiah literally um compared us to grasshoppers in the sight of god is interesting but um where is it i'm gonna put isaiah 4022 and then write insignificant in contrast to his power. Then it says that you are mindful of him, you being God. So God is mindful of man. So yet in all creation, God is mindful of us. He's mindful of our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions. And again, to be mindful of is to remember with kindness. So he is invested in us and our growth. Even though in comparison to everything that he's created in this world and how 
insignificant we truly are, he still is invested in us. So I'm going to put invested in us. That is sloppy, but I don't care. <laughs> It says, and the son of man that you have, I'm sorry, and the son of man that you visit him. So there's two things that I think of. Um, when I hear son of man, I automatically think of Jesus. But for this, um, what I get is that because of Jesus, we get to have a personal connection with God and he visits us. And again, to visit is to attend to, to pay attention to, to observe. So he pays attention to us. He attends to our needs. He observes us. He, he dwells with us. He dwells within us. So... You visit him. I'm going to have to write this on a sticky note. I'm going to put verse 4. I'm just writing on a sticky note. Is that verse 4? Yes. Verse 4. Um, because of Jesus. We have a personal... connection with God. He dwells within us and attends to us. I'm going to use pink move my sticky note over here for a second okay um then going on to verse five it says you have made him a little lower than the angels so basically god created us to be less than the holy perfect angels on earth we are lower but in heaven we will reign with them singing holy 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 so um for that i have two cross references the first one i'm going to tell you guys i'm not going to read through you can read it on your own but that's going to be hebrews 2 7 through 9 but the other one it's going to be Luke 20, verse 36. So again, the first one is Hebrews 2, um, verses 7 through 9. You can read that on your own. But the one that I'm going to read is Luke 20 and 36. And that says, Nor can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels and are the son of God, being sons of the resurrection. So when we are resurrected, brought into heaven, um, when we are finally in heaven, we will be equal with them but here on earth we are a little lower than them and lower basically means to lack so we lack something that the angels already have okay then it says you have crowned him with glory and honor so again i looked up the definition of crowned crowned was to surround or encircle glory was abundance and splendor and honor was beauty and majesty so basically we are distinguished by god himself we are purposed for greatness. He created us with beauty, strength, and I'm sorry, my notes are like all over the place. But um, he created us with beauty, power, and strength. He surrounds us and keeps close watch of us, qualifying us to do mighty things because we are co-heirs with Christ. Um, so I'm going to go back because definitely didn't write my notes. <laughs> I'm just going back to quickly write my notes because I totally forgot to do that. So 
So for that, I'm literally just writing a scripture. Um, so you have made him a little lower than the angels. I'm just going to put the scripture. Luke 20, 36. I don't really want to write too much. And then you have crowned him with glory and honor. Distinguished. By God. Purposed for greatness. Surround us. And keeps. Close watch. And you're almost done. Okay. <clears throat> then in verse 6 it says, You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. So I'm going to underline that. And then it says, You have put all things under his feet. Gonna underline that. Okay, so you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Basically, God already has dominion, yet he mandates and calls us to take it. We're called to do a great work. Um, so He calls slash mandates us to have ruling power. Because remember, dominion is ruling power, gain control of, <clears throat> gain control of, or govern over. Why is my voice going away? So he called... <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with my voice. He calls and mandates us to have ruling power on earth. So that brings the question of will you heed the call? And this is not something that is new for man. This is definitely something that he ordained back in Genesis. If you read Genesis um, 1, verses 26 to 28, he talks about this with Adam and Eve. He tells them to have dominion. And also in Psalm 24 and 1, where do I want to write that? I'm not going to read those scriptures, but you can go. So again, that is going to be um, Psalms 24 and 1 and Genesis one twenty six to twenty eight that you can read as cross references. And you have put all things under his feet. So with great authority comes great responsibility. So the question is, are you a good steward over the resources that God has given you? Do you steward well? Are you governing well? Are you being respectful in your governing? Are you being um, just and right in your governing? Um, so those are things that I think of personally. So. Sorry, with great authority. I'm going to.
And again, that question is, are you a good steward? over his resources. So how are you um how are you parenting? How are you dealing with your finances? How are you using your skills and talents and things like that? Cuz those are all things that he gave us to steward over. Um they're not ours. He gave it to us just to steward over for his kingdom, for his purpose. And then it says um, in verse 7 and 8, All the sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. I don't have anything particularly to say about it, but there are two cross-references for these scriptures. So um, 7 and 8, I literally just have Genesis 9, 2, and then James 3, 7. I mean, because it's literally just talking about ruling over the things on earth, literally. Like, there's there's nothing really significant to say about it, at least in my opinion. I don't have anything to say. So, quickly, I'll just go to Genesis 9-2. So Genesis 9 and 2 says, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth, and all the fish in the sea. They are given into your hand. So basically, God gave us those things to rule over, to power over, to power over, wrong, um, to rule over, to control, and to govern. And then James 3, 7 Come on, James. 3, 7. That reads, For every kind of beast and bird, a reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. So those are just two scriptures that really reinforces um, this one from the beginning of time and one towards the end in the New Testament. And then verse 9 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And it's literally just repeating what was mentioned in the first verse. I'm not really going to we talked about that because I, I mentioned it already but um yeah that is it i'm going to stick my sticky note somewhere i guess i'll stick it here can i stick it there we'll stick the sticky note there i'm going to grab my definitions and stick that there and that is it so uh, of course again i'm going to do like i did yesterday where at the end i have what we learned um pay this no mind i'm going to edit it before i post it up for purchase but um the first thing that we learn is that god made man glorious high and mighty we may be insignificant in all of creation but we are so important to him we see that man um we see mankind and their place in the created order of things so we are a little lower than angels but we have dominion over all things on earth man is important to god and worth so much to him God's greatness is manifested in his jewels, and his jewels are basically mankind. Um, he created us in his image, according to Genesis 126. I think that's the correct scripture. Let me make sure that's the right scripture. <laughs> um, 126. Where art thou? Yeah, so um, Genesis 126 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish in the seas, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So, God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So that's one, um, one, Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Um, then we have, you guys can see that. Uh, God created order and he keeps it, which I mentioned. Um, so I'm actually going to... Y'all gonna see me edit this right now? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Taking that part out because I already mentioned it. But um, we can also look around us to see the beauty of his work and yet never fully understand the vastness of who God is. Um, we'll never truly understand it. We know he's sovereign. We know that he's mighty. We know that he is a creator. He's a source. We understand that um, 
you know, everything that we see, everything that we touch is a result of something that God did. But we can never truly understand the vastness. Just as the sky is so large and we see the moon, but we don't personally know how large the moon is because we've never seen the moon so close. We just know from what we see in the sky. The same thing with the stars. We see how tiny they are. Um, we know that they shine bright, but do we really understand how bright the stars are in the sky? No, because we have never seen them in person. Um, so basically, God is to be glorified because of these poor things. The first one is that he made himself known to us, which we know from verse 1. Um, he makes use of the weakest of the children of men to service his purpose. We see that in verse 2. Verse 3 and 4 tells us that he makes angels useful to man. And in verses 5 through 8, we see that he gave man dominion over the earth, even though he has total and complete dominion over everything. So that is it just for this study. I don't remember what the next study is going to be, honestly, but you guys can see the picture. <laughs> um, actually, wait, the next study, I think, is Psalms 23 for Friday. Yeah, so the next study we are going to do is going to be Psalm 23, because I know a lot of you really want to break that down. So Psalms 23, which is the Lord, the shepherd of his people, um, which is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We're going to break that down and study it together next Friday. Right. I, I believe it's on Friday. Friday and Saturday, I'm going to come back on again. So we have Psalms 23 for Friday. And then for Saturday, we are going to go into Psalm 19. So I'm actually going to be studying. I have all of the Psalms that we'll be studying. All right. So I'll just let you guys know. We've got Psalms 23. We have Psalms 19. We have psalm 63 that we're going to study and these papers i literally use these to um study i'll show you guys we have psalms 91 there are a few other psalms as well if you look at the schedule that i posted up for the psalms um let me just show you guys how my studying goes so because i've already studied these psalms that we're going through in my old journaling bible what i do is i print out <laughs> I print it out, then I circle all the words that I know I wanted to find, and I scribble just notes everywhere. Let me zoom out. I scribble notes everywhere. <laughs> and then I go into my computer and type it out for you guys in a more presentable manner. So that's why I have the other ones printed out. But um, yes, that is it for today. I'm going to edit this, post it up. It's going to be the same price, um, $2. I'm not going to charge an arm and a leg. You guys know how I feel. Um, but... I'm going to edit this and then post it up, make it available for you guys. Those who did purchase the Psalms one study notes, that will be going out right after this um, live is over. But are there any questions, any comments, anything you want to discuss before I log off? I need to heat my coffee back up. It's cold. You guys want to see how bad I am at drinking my coffee when it's hot? Mind you, I feel this all the way to the top. I still have this much coffee left. Terrible. I don't understand, like, when I make coffee, my coffee is hot. But it, it it's, like, too hot for me to drink. And by the time I get ready to drink it, it's cold. So then I have to heat it up again. I don't know if that's, like, the problem a problem for any of you. But I've noticed that that is a major problem for me. Um. Well, I will let you guys know what I am currently reading before I get off. Let me just find my books don't know where they are okay let me just grab some stuff real quick okay so i had finished reading <laughs> yeah it's definitely a problem but um so we're done with this. I'm just going to close this up and put it, actually just put it to the side so I can take a picture of it for later. But so before I get up, so I finished reading Star of Persia. You guys saw, I talked about it on Instagram. Um, This is by Joe Eileen Smith. I adore this story. It's a five star for me. Um, This was epic. This literally just walks through the entire book of Esther in biblical like in a fictional format and i thoroughly enjoy i actually have a book look makeup tutorial discussion coming on this um i just have to edit it and it's like a two-hour video <laughs> pray for me um but i 
you guys know the book look tutorials what I do is basically I take a biblical fiction or Christian fiction novel and after I read it I recreate a makeup look using the colors and then I also discuss it this was a solid five star read I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy it definitely would recommend you guys check it out so that video should be live hopefully next week <laughs> I have a lot of videos to upload um then right now biblical fiction wise i am diving into the pharaoh's daughter i know that this was supposed to be a book club read <laughs> like a month ago <gasps> yeah um i'm finally diving into this um and it's pretty interesting so far um it follows pharaoh's daughter which is the young girl that found or excuse me not young girl but the woman that found um moses inside of the basket and raised him um it's it's quite interesting so far i'm I'm enjoying it it's sitting at like a 3.5 right now I'm only about 95 pages in so right now it's a 3.5 I'm going to read some of this today get to the halfway mark and we'll see but um so far so good really enjoying this and then as far as nonfiction books I have three books I'm going to be diving into um, so the first one is this one by Bob Yandian. I've talked about him before on my channel. Um, I got the opportunity to meet him in person and hear him hear him preach um, at a leadership conference that my bishop had the leaders attend. Um, so it's Leadership Secrets of the of David the King. I read his other one called Calling and Separation and thoroughly enjoyed it. But um, I'm going to be diving into this. I haven't read it yet, like I said, but I'm going to be diving into this. Um, it's based on Psalms 131 apparently so that's quite interesting I'm actually going to be starting this book series so this has three books um, it's a woman God can use a woman Jesus can teach and a woman the Holy Spirit can lead or something like that um, there are three of them and I have the first two um, they do have new covers but they literally just go through different women of the Bible so this one goes through Eve Leah Rahab, Deborah, Ruth, Hannah, Abigail, um, the widow, Hulda and Miriam, Esther, the Proverbs 31 woman, um, and then from Eve to Mary, and then I have the New Testament one as well, so I'm going to be diving into this, hopefully, we'll see, I don't know, um, and then I'm finally diving in to this terrifying book, I know you guys probably looking at this title like, what? Okay. It's not a bad book, okay? <laughs> it is the Demon Dictionary. There's actually two volumes. Let me grab the other volume for you guys to show you quickly before I log on. Uh, where is it? Okay, there it is. Okay, so before I get into this, here's the other one, A Woman Jesus Can Teach. Um, this is on New Testament Women, so I have that. But this Demon Dictionary, there are two of them. Volume one is called, um, it's basically Know Your Enemy, Learn His Strategies, and Defeat Him. And then volume two is an expose on cultural practices, symbols, myths, and Luciferian. I think that's what you say, Luciferian doctrine. Um, I have had these for about a year, maybe two years now. My mom and I have both have copies. And um, this is basically a guide to understanding dark spirits and supernatural manifestations. So this one helps you build your spiritual vocabulary um equip you with ammunition and weapons for spiritual warfare lisa what do you think about it i haven't read it yet i did glance through it and i thought some of the things in here were interesting so have you gotten a chance to read through it um but this one um increases your knowledge of cultic demonic words names, places and things and it brings to light areas of your life that the enemy wants to remain dark and then volume two goes into european folklore wiccan beliefs american cult secret societies african hispanic and native american folklore astrology paranormal and things like that um so it's literally just like a dictionary words breakdowns um she gives you the symbols and things like that and I have been very nervous <laughs> to read this for a minute. I have been feeling God pull me to read it, but my thing with it is I was scared to dive into it because I know once I get into this and really start learning what this stuff is, it's going to open up um, my spirit even more. And I'm not new to seeing spirits and demons and things like that. Um, one thing about me and my siblings is as kids, we already began to see demons. Um, and we basically always saw the same ones. Um, they're kind of like little imps that we would see. And um, I've just always been nervous because, <laughs> you know, as a kid, they didn't terrify me, but they definitely scared me a bit. And um, I just felt like I wasn't ready 
you dive into this and really like learn things so i'll be starting it um and one thing that i thought was interesting this is probably random but if you guys can see that it says masturbation um she talks about masturbation in here what it is and also gives a scripture reference and i think that's interesting because a lot of the times when you hear people talk about sex and masturbation you don't hear people really reference scripture so the fact that she gave an actual scripture reference yeah the same thing here i do see demons and 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 like i i can see them and um it doesn't scare me but it scares me what in the world was that okay sorry guys it literally had a curse word i was like what what is that but um it's really interesting um the way she breaks this down and she gives you terms and definitions scripture description of like spirits and warfare and things like that so she she goes through the different spirits like the spirit of jealousy and things like that um scriptures related to the devil and his demons hell um so yeah it's gonna be a task i'm a little nervous <laughs> but i feel I, don't, I i personally feel like i'll never be ready so just dive in you know god is calling me and pulling me to read these books i've been ignoring it so have them but yeah we have that and then the last one i'm going to show you guys before i get off is resuscitating evangelism i actually just got this from bh bloggers and um i'm excited to dive into this this sounds really really interesting um and it's all about evangelism and you don't have to be an evangelist to read it i am evangel i'm i'm an ordained evangelist so that's why i specifically got it but um let me just show you guys the chapters so some of the chapters in here are like checking your pulse um, your source of strength and power, addressing the malnourishment, and basically the malnourishment spiritually, spiritual wise. Um, and I, I just think it's going to be an interesting read. So that's that. Just wanted to share that with you guys because I know I haven't made a video yet on um, the things that I'm currently reading and things like that. But that is it for I guess this live. If there are no questions, no comments, or anything like that, I am going to quickly pray us out and get back to working on these notes so I can post it up. <laughs> so, um, let me just pray us out. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, for allowing us to study your word together. We thank you for the fellowship and the communion that we were able to have. Lord, may we take what we learned from this psalm that King David has written and be able to apply it that we may be able to experience and take heed to the things that you have created on this earth that we may understand and be secure in our position on earth and understand that you have given us power you have given us strength and that even in our weakness we can find strength and we are strong and that you ordained us for a purpose and that we can be of great use to you even when we feel useless lord we thank you for this day and amen so that is it for today like i said i'll be back friday um and we'll be diving into psalms 23 which i know is a lot of people's favorites <laughs> scripture a lot of people have requested that i break that down so we are going to be doing that but that is it for this so uh is it still morning time <laughs> yes it is it's almost the afternoon so i hope that you guys have a great afternoon stay safe stay inside wash your hands keep yourself you know safe during this time and I will chat with you all later. Bye.